we all have a place that we call our home. You have an address. You have a building. You have a home. Still? Fair trial. It's in the press. Now, do you hear me? As I was saying, we all have a home. We have a house. We have an address. We have a place where we go to when we go out and we return. It's a place of safety. It's a place we feel comfortable. It's a place that is ours, that belongs to us. You have also another home. You have this home. This house of God belongs to you, to each and every one of you, and that's why you come here on a Sunday, on a feast day, for a special occasion. Here you are at peace. Here you are filled with God's grace, fortified to go back out into this world that is uncertain, and deal with the everyday life and issues that we are forced to deal with. The Holy Great Church of Christ is once again besieged, is once again in the hands of intruders. It was something built in the sixth century rebuilt by the famous Emperor Justinian in the 600s or in the 7th century and functioned as our center, as our home, as the symbol of the unity of Orthodox Christianity throughout the entire world. Hagia Sophia, the holy wisdom of God. After 900 years serving as our spiritual center, when the city fell to the Turks in 1453, this church was converted into a mosque. Perhaps this is the wrong word to use, converted into. You can put another coat of paint on your house, but it stays the same. It doesn't change. It's where you live. Somebody else is coming in and taking up residence and not allowed you to hold on to what is yours, to what belongs to you. And then in 1935, Kemal Ataturk proclaimed this a museum. It was a kind of compromise because Hagia Sophia doesn't belong just to the Orthodox. Hagia Sophia is a symbol of Christian unity. It is a symbol that unites all people of good faith, even those who are not Christians. Hagia Sophia stood tall and stands tall throughout earthquakes, throughout fires, throughout revolutions. Hagia Sophia has fallen in and out of the hands of our ecumenical patriarchate who, are, who is the caretaker of this magnificent home, house of God that we know about, have read about, have visited. Walking in, we don't think of it neither as a mosque Neither as a museum, we think of it as a church, as it was built. None of you, none of us would go in without secretly doing the sign of the cross. Because that's what we learned when we enter into the church. And last Friday, 
as though it were everyday business. Even though we were warned, Hagia Sophia was proclaimed by the Turkish government to be once again a mosque starting July the 24th. And they are thinking of how they are going to hide the magnificent mosaics, the magnificent platitera in the apps, because as you know in Islam, images are not permitted. A cross might be permitted, but not a person. So all this has to be hidden. And they are figuring out modern ways and modern technology because of the, the delicacy of the decoration of this church. They can't and hopefully will not cover it up with stucco or gesso because when this, this magnificent spiritual house of worship once again is allowed to continue the divine liturgy that was interrupted in 1453, these little particles, as you see in the mosaics here, are fragile and would unstick or become unstuck from the walls if you cover them with something. So fortunately, there is the thought how to preserve this because UNESCO, and not only UNESCO, so many other organizations worldwide have condemned this movement as one of being unjust. I would call it barbaric. I would say that once again, Barbary has shown its ugly face. And although we try to be Christian and think as Christians, our home, our mother, has been violated. What is ours has been taken from us as spoils of war, as spoils of conquest. What is ours has been turned into something else. And the only thing we can do is sit back in scandal and bear it and bear it because we don't have the power to step on such a serpent's head and put things right. We as individuals, where is our power? Our power is here in our heart. Our power is in our prayer. Our power is in our minds to write and to insist that Hagia Sophia at least be returned to the status of a museum so that everyone can go and visit freely and see the wonders of the Orthodox tradition, architecture, iconography, and religious life. We have become homeless and are out of the streets of this magnificent temple which was built for the glory of God and named for the holy wisdom of God. I ask each and every one of you to stay alert. You can't imagine that someone could come here and walk in and take it over. You wouldn't allow it, first of all. The laws wouldn't allow it. And if the laws change, if somebody goes crazy, you have to be here to defend your home. Your home, this home, God's home, our home, our place of worship. Nothing could be more sacred. Nothing could be more offensive. Nothing could be more ungodly than to go in and disrupt the home of someone else. 
Now this church, this great cathedral, the holy great church of God, the holy great church of Christ, will have strangers living in its walls. And I suppose we, as good Christians, have one choice and one choice only. That Hagia Sophia will be a good host and hostess. Christ and Panagia, who will stay seated in the apse of the church, will allow our guests to sit in our places and pray in our space until such time that the wisdom of God shows its mighty arm and returns to us what is rightfully ours. I ask you all to please stand with me to sing those of you who know it in Greek because I don't have the words in English the apolitikio the hymn of the holy great church of Christ Hagia Sophia blessed be you our God Evlogito si Christeo Theo si mon O parso fus Tu sali Constantinople in 1204. They robbed her of her riches and her possessions, physical and spiritual. But particularly in the 7th century, we went to the Virgin Mary and sat all night without sitting, chanting the Akathist hymn, which means chanting the hymn without sitting down. And this has become for each and every one of us, especially of the older generation, a sort of national hymn, if I may, for our church, asking the Holy Mother of God 
to intervene to her son, Jesus Christ, to correct this injustice. Let us sing together. Let us chant together. Ti permajo strategio ta nikitiria. Ti permajo.